following is a summary of The Fascist Coup Against Venezuela by Hugo Chavez, a collection of speeches and addresses delivered between December 2002 and January 2003. This video should not be viewed as an endorsement of Chavez. Rather, this is a presentation motivated by the historical significance of Chavez rhetoric and ideology for the nation of Venezuela. The introductory presentation is A Battle for Venezuela and for Hope. It is credited to Plaza Editions, Cuba, though it is likely Chavez either had a hand in its contents or at least approved them. This introduction is structured much like a verbal presentation and begins with a memorable hook. Quote, Today in Venezuela, there is a struggle of the past against the future and against hope. A struggle waged by those who have traditionally been privileged against those who have always been socially excluded. The author describes these alleged fascists as a group of petroleum oligarchs, entrepreneurs, the media, bureaucrats, and treasonous military chiefs plotting a coup to, quote, overthrow the legally elected government of President Hugo Chavez and frustrate the dreams of social justice of the majority of the Venezuelan people. The author accuses these enemies of social justice of perpetuating a fascist coup, referring to the attempted coup d'etat of April 11, 2002. The author credits the people for returning Chavez to power at Mia Flores Palace on April 14th. The author mocks the leader of the attempted coup, Pedro Carmona, nicknaming him The Brief and consigning him to the dung heap of history. The author celebrates Chavez's merciful treatment of his enemies, but accuses them of further treasonous plotting motivated by laws Chavez was seeking to implement in 2003, which would reform the PDVSA, which Chavez believed to be too private in structure. The author paints Chavez as representing the interest of thousands of farmers against the greedy and treasonous oil industry, who, quote, had lived as privileged citizens, earning sky-high salaries by virtue of being members of the up-until-then sacred meritocracy. In the author's rhetoric, meritocracy is a false concept, something opposed to the best interests of the people. Those who went on strike against Chavez's PDVSA or resisted his reforms in other ways are accused of subversion and association with the coup d'etat. The author dismisses these efforts and praises the patriots who attempted to get the oil industry running again. To review, by the author's logic, refusing to work under the government's new rules is a form of unpatriotic sedition. Meritocracy is a bogus concept at odds with the people's dream for social justice. The government taking 20% of an industry's profits is generous. Operating expenses for the oil industry are made up and non-existent, and the forcible renationalization of the oil industry is celebrated as a triumph of loyal Venezuelans over the seditious, wealthy businessmen and their stooges. The author mocks other attempts to oppose the nationalization of the oil industry, accusing protesters of being upper and middle class, and blames private television networks and the media for this supposed fascist coup. He names the owners of these networks and accuses them of complicity with the old Venezuelan government and describes their criticism as media terrorism. The author impugns his enemies' motives. Quote, what the coup plotters want is to take power away from the people. What they want is to reinstate the past with its social exclusion and violation of rights. The author touts Chavez's social programs government housing and schools, increased university budgets and salaries, free medical care, new water supply systems, farmer benefits, and his government's refusal to privatize various industries. Privatization is seen as something the neoliberals advocated for in the past and something the fascists advocate for in the present. The author celebrates Chavez's patriotic supporters and touts him as the heroic opposition to the alleged fascists and their foreign allies. The author celebrates Chavez's speeches and rhetoric as an indispensable testimony of the battle that today is being waged in Venezuela for its people, for the ideas of Bolivar, because a better Latin America is possible, and so that the truth 
may be known. This concludes the first presentation, to which I will simply add this. Uncle Scrooge, why don't they just print up a few billion or so? A few billion? Oh, dear, no. Unless something's behind it, in the treasury. Something solid and secure. <clears throat> like me. We'd have inflation. Inflation? Oh, that's a mess. Your money would be worth less and less. I might take this hat full, I dare say, to buy what your piggy bank would buy today. A dollar wouldn't be worth the paper it's printed on. Ooh. Oh, my, my, my. It's what you can buy with what you've got. That's what counts. It's a question of economics. Economics? I also want to thank my patrons on Patreon for this month. If you like what I'm doing, you can also support this channel's growth on Patreon, and you can support it by liking, commenting, and subscribing, and clicking the bell to be notified when I make new videos. I love you guys, and I'll catch you later.